fellow survivors. Welcome back to the garage. You're watching the most in-depth and useful show for every true fan of Crossout. Subscribe now and don't forget to click the bell icon never to miss another episode full of good stuff straight from the devs. Load your guns, people. We're rolling out. Survivors, today is a very special test drive episode. Not long ago, the leader of the scavengers, Scar AB, discovered a picture of a car back from those days when they were still peacefully riding the roads and not blowing each other up. He immediately wanted to get one, but alas, those days were long gone. Still, on the idea though, Scar announced a competition on recreating the best copy of that car. You could have read about that on the official Crossout forum. The competition itself has ended, so we've decided to show you a couple of high-quality entries. CDC 5 RAM As you can see, a 100% matching cabin was impossible to find. That's why a thug cabin was used as its basis. Its low power is the reason it's dismally slow. The designer recreated the frame of the pre-war car, patching together armored parts and then painting it with different dyes. Quite a chiseled work, despite fairly good protection. There's lots of free space under the hood. This is why this craft is easier to adapt for combat. However, it won't go any much faster. It would be wiser to set some long-range weaponry and attack from a distance, allowing only your allies to admire the elegant design of this ride. Obviously, this kind of vehicle is more for the soul rather than combat. However, in the wastes there can always come a moment when one has to rush to battle all available vehicles. As for the exterior, it's nearly flawless. The ride looks pretty much like the original. CDC-5 CWA RAM This specimen is way faster, even though it has lots of heavy armored parts installed. A growl cabin and a monstrous V8 engine handle the mass nicely, as well as build up impressive speed, while the twin wheels allow for comfortable driving. Stylistically, the ride looks quite like the original, and very appropriate for the current era. Its nose looks very much like the one on Bay's picture. The windshield is covered with a small mold for mostly design reasons. The risk of damage in this area is quite low. One can easily install a couple of shotguns on this armored ride and then bravely fight in a close-range battle since the protection allows for that. By the way, these cross-out forum contests take place on a weekly basis. Talented designers, of which there are quite a few, can compete for in-game gold and prizes. Come join, read the terms, and take part. We will only be too happy to show the world your best works. And now, for the combat crafts. In the second part of the video, you're about to meet Steppenwolves, the most organized faction of the post-crossout world. Right now, we're gonna show you a couple of good rides created on Steppenwolf's workbenches. Tsunami Run Run This armored vehicle has two powerful BC-17 Tsunami cannons. The call for flight is right in its name, and it's justified as never before. Its damage is stratospheric. Two salvos at a medium power ride are enough to completely destroy it. Stylistically, these cannons resemble the ship-mounted ones, but are incapable of turning around the wide arc. If you take into account the fact that the ride has five pairs of wheels, this can turn out to be trouble. However, this monster might just not give a damn about its enemies. Tsunami has 11,000 points of power. The vehicles will again and again get into dangerous companies, but its health level of over 3,000 points guarantees quite a support. Thanks to the scope, Tsunami is able to place fire from a safe distance. Stylistically, this ride slightly resembles a ship, 
Probably because of the multi-layered decks. It's a pity, though, that you can't install anything on them anymore. Humpback's 12 points of energy, as well as additional 3 points of gas generator, has already been spent. As if it was a joke, the designer welded the mold of a steam train to the nose of this cruiser. Tsunami will hardly ever try to ram anyone. Except maybe for the similar clumsy giant. Apparently, for the very same reasons, two spoilers are installed abaft. The color is unusual. It's the Iron Cross pattern, which was available during the recent event. It makes Tsunami look a bit whimsical. However, it's no longer going to be a laughing matter for the enemies when both hull guns are aimed at their craft. Walker V-10 Another vehicle based on the jawbreaker cabin. The cabin holds on the frame with four mechanical legs welded to it. That's a Steppenwolf's exclusive. The speed isn't high, but sound. Terrain features won't be a problem for this one. Due to its moderate mass, the Walker is even faster than any similar craft. However, things are not that good with the weaponry. There are two Vectors and one Spectre II machine gun. Of course, a salvo of all three of them can deal some significant damage, but it still might not be enough. One should not also discard blind areas. One machine gun sweeps only the area in front of the car, while two others are quite stiff. It would be nice if all three of them could aim at one hull. Otherwise, it's easy to spin the craft while the enemy behind it deals damage unpunished. The loss of even one mechanical leg will also lead to deplorable results. We would advise on enhancing the design with some alternative weaponry. Clumsy mech would do better with turrets, copters and wheel drones, all of which are self-guided. And don't forget, of course, homing missiles. The Caucasus gun is not a bad option, but it's better installed alongside some powerful long-range weapon. Steppenwolves are one of the factions within the high-powered organization of the Brotherhood, along with the Scavengers. Wolves are an elite squad carrying out dangerous missions in rough conditions, the punishing sword of the Brotherhood. In the past, Steppenwolves are mostly military men. Later, all kinds of survivors sided with them, but the frame are still those who helped civilians in the harsh years right after the catastrophe. To this day, Wolves prefer using state-of-the-art works of military scientists and engineers in their crafts. At the head of the faction is Major Eric Stahl, a.k.a. Iron Hand. For as long as he remembers, Eric was always serving his country. When the world collapsed, Stahl remained a soldier and alongside several other top-ranking officers continued serving the interim government. Generally speaking, his life hasn't changed much. The regs are still regs, while the enemies are always easy to find. Years passed, and the goals of the Brotherhood were gradually changing, as well as their attitude to common people. Eric realized that his ideals were getting more and more out of sync with those of the command. He tried to spend as much time as possible in combat, sparing neither himself nor his subordinates. With his honesty and uncomprisingly following the regs, Eric earned respect of soldiers as well as growing mistrust of the headquarters. His popularity was so huge that even after losing his arm, he wasn't released as any other flawed member of the Brotherhood, but instead got a mechanical prosthesis and a corresponding nickname. But when his scars and eyes started glowing, Eric understood that he had spent too much time in the wastes, and the time came to embark on his last crusade. He took the best fighters among those not any more welcome in the headquarters and darted northwest to fight for the new lands in the name of the Brotherhood. In their approach to crafting, wolves resemble scavengers. The more damage and armor, the better. They usually use different armored parts off abandoned military machinery, but sometimes pay attention to the parts of other factions, especially when it comes to weaponry and design elements. Wolf's vehicles are their calling card. You'll never mistake them for any other. 
The quality and the military discipline are seen from afar. To enter the faction is harder than any other. You'll need level 25 instead of 10. Steppenwolves are the only faction as of today capable of constructing two cabins, the Jawbreaker and the Humpback. The first one is a rare one, has an increased safety factor of 225 points of structure and 11 points of energy. The fastest engine among armored cabins lets you assemble both a fast-running craft with close-range and middle-range weaponry and a long-range fighter. The Humpback is the only epic cabin in the game. 300 points of structure, 12 points of energy, maximum tonnage and slow engine make it appropriate for those preferring long-distance fights. This cabin is not easy to find. This is why survivors often use Scavenger's Trucker as an affordable alternative, which is, well, weaker in all parameters. Here is a Sidekick Wheel Drone, which has a Spectre 2 machine gun aboard. Since it's a tangible assistance in battle, survivors often take it with them. And it's easy to assemble, as with other parts of similar class, you'll need several regular parts, copper and scraps. The Caucasus machine gun is the toughest in the game, with 492 points of structure. Even the Reaper, Nomad's legendary machine gun, is inferior in this parameter. On top of that, Caucasus automatically aims and attacks the closest enemy, which lets you avoid distraction in the rage of battle. This advantage may count against you. In the battle with several enemies, the scope will be jumping among every one of them, so it's better to lure them one by one. It's assembled of rare-grade parts, copper, wires and scraps, and uses four points of energy. Guided missiles? They're here as well. The player has to aim the clarinet toe in the right direction, and the rest is done by the missile. To create clarinet, you'll need rare-grade parts, copper, wires, and scraps. It requires five points of energy, but you can only install one clarinet aboard. In the wastes, you might have seen crafts with mechanical legs. One of them has just been featured in the test drive. The part is called the ML200, and is available only for Steppenwolves. The part is very durable, but significantly slows down the craft. The stability of the walking vehicle is above average. The legs allow to compensate the recoil or the explosion impulse. An unusual, but nevertheless an interesting engineer for experienced players. Steppenwolves' legendary workbench allows to create only one weapon. But what a weapon it is! The Mandrake Howitzer deals significantly long-range damage while taking cover. If you remember, it was installed on the cancer ship Leviathan from the previous episode. It leaves a flammable liquid puddle dealing fire damages to all targets. It's better to use Mandrake while standing, because when moving, the scatter is way bigger. Mandrake is utterly useless in melee combat. That's why you should take good care of protection. It's assembled as any other legendary part. Several epic parts, copper, wires, electronics, and scraps. Steppenwolves and their inventions are essential in the wastes. They're at the technological forefront in the world where pretty much nothing is left. You might have noticed how often we've mentioned all these parts in other episodes of the show. In this or that way, they all have been presented. They've been installed on users' crafts, met in tactical advice and turned up in effective assemblies. It once more proves that Wolf's parts are good, unusual and diverse, which means they deserve attention. You'll need a lot of time to get to them, but it's well worth it. Survivors, Steppenwolves are the last faction in Crossout as of today. But a new faction is about to overthrow the balance of power in the wastes. They call themselves the Dawn Children and they've already left the underground. You'll get lots of exhaustive information on them in the next week's episode of The Garage. Don't miss it. A new week has granted us a new bunch of hotspot questions from the gamers. Here we go. Will Crossout be released on a Mac? We would love to give Mac users an opportunity to play Crossout, but this takes some time.
Can you let players create their own maps? We do not currently plan to introduce this functionality. However, we're always ready to discuss players' ideas in our forum. Why did you change controls on Xbox with the latest update? Can I switch them back? We're trying to make the controls as comfortable as possible for all the players. In the upcoming updates, we'll continue to improve it. Well, that's it for today, survivors. We're close to the anniversary 10th episode of The Garage, and we'll definitely get a couple of surprises for you. Don't hesitate to ask all your questions and leave opinions in the comments. And do me a favor, will you? Tell your friends about the show. Be seeing you.